This is the Criterion Increase Podcast, and tonight we conclude our deep dive mm -hmm. into Spine 369 in the Criterion Collection. Paul mm -hmm. Robeson, Portraits of the Artist. Yeah. Uh, these The final two installments, the last disc in the set. Uh, mm -hmm. The Proud mm -hmm. Valley from 1940, directed by Penn Tennyson. Everyone's okay. favorite. And yeah. Native Land from 1942, directed by Leo Hurwitz and Paul Stram. All right, Jane. Are you relieved? Well, I got to tell you, Jarrett, coming off of last week, that third quarter was pretty tough. I didn't see a lot of end in sight. But now we're in. We're we're through the tunnel. I, I am happy to report the score is zero to forty nine. What, what can you speak to this? Well, it's not really about what the scoreboard says. It just depends on how hard you played. And I say that we played pretty hard, man. You're the last in the division. Yeah, I mean rankings aren't important either. I think it really depends on how how much of yourself you put into it. Can you speak to your rampant steroid abuse? Well, I think that like uh, substance use is, is kind of like an exaggerated fact. It just depends on how much fun you have while you're playing the game. <laughs> what about all the torn quads? That one hurt. That one wasn't great. Mm -hmm. The what, doctors say what, I may what, never recover. What about the CTE? Huh? <laughs> the what? Anyway. Yeah, it's been um, it's been a stretch for, for, for observers giving, uh, paying close attention to the ins and outs of uh, the last few weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe some one might describe we're at a point of uh, like total uh, soul destruction. And not, 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 not not because these are particularly bad films or anything like that. Um, no, um, there's nothing about them. Not that, all like, of them. That's like we're like. Good God, what is this? Mm -hmm. It's just like, you know, jumping from your your dark sands to your mm -hmm. <laughs> borderline <laughs> to uh Well don't forget about Jericho. Uh aka Dark Sands. Don't, don't forget about Jericho, Jericho. Our, our old friend or Sanders. Don't forget about Sanders. Oh, on the river? On the river? Oh damn, yeah, I forgot no. about that guy. That yeah. That thing. Anyway, mm -hmm. so here we here we come, like sliding into home to keep those sports uh, analogies going. Mm -hmm. um, with two films that I guess were more of a, a snapshot of the, the the politics that people talk all so much about when they talk about Paul Robeson. Is he like political? I didn't. I can't tell. It's, I never got that. Yeah. yeah me. Me neither. Me neither. Yeah. So anyway, here we are. Here we are. Um, and then everything mm -hmm. goes back to normal next week as we watch movies made by by nice Italian men. What kind of men? I Italian men. Holy shit! Yeah, that was something the Criterion is very well known for. Italian but men. We'll talk about that later. So first up, we have the Proud Valley from 1940. Okay. A tagline for this film. Yeah. In a Welsh coal mining valley, a young man with a beautiful singing voice is called upon to make the ultimate sacrifice when a pit disaster threatens. That's not entirely <laughs> a great description. Do you know what I mean? No. It's definitely part of this film. It happens kind of over the course of two segments of the film. May I describe this film? To sure. You? Sure. Traveling homeless man sings his way across America, and America, right in, and right into the hellhole that is coal, that is Wales, that is Wales, and uh, right across America, <laughs> singing his way. And let me tell you, what, the coal union that wasn't created yet. What was his name, RJ? Say his name in the Proud Valley. Yeah. Uh, Herman Gleckenstein. Oh my, come on. His name's comical. Uh, Pete? No. <laughs> Think, I have uh, you're a, you're, I thought, you thought you were a good, I thought you were a good Bible boy. Oh. Jesus. No. <laughs> I don't know what his uh, name you, is. Okay, okay. RJ, prepare yeah. yourself. Steal yourself. His yeah. name. 
David Goliath. No. Yeah. Come on. That's not what his name was in this it, movie. It sure was it? it sure is. Is that I I remember the David now. They didn't call him David Goliath. David they? Goliath. No. Come on. Jarrett. Yeah. <laughs> no. How many do you know uh, John Goliath? Me me I, neither. I know a Pete David. Yeah. I know a Larry David. You know Peter David? I know P- Peter Davidson. Oh. You think there's any relation there? Well, I was thinking of Peter David, the the comics writer behind Hulk. Well, yeah, he did Red Hulk, right? I uh, know that was uh, Jeff Loeb. That was Jeff Loeb. Yeah, that wasn't Jeff Loeb, was it? It was. Hey, that was Jeff Loeb. Okay. So, anyways, so David Goliath, he's a yeah. sailor, and he's in England, aka Wales. Yeah. Um. He manages to uh, hobo ride his way in a train, meets mm-hmm. a guy named Bert, a real uh, a scallywag scamp of a man who, what is he, what is it called, grinding? He, talk, he starts talking about grinding a lot. You ever hear about grinding? He says, I'm always grinding. I'm on the grind. Yeah. And he said, I think he says for the trim or something. I'm not really sure <laughs> yeah, what that means. I think means. he might. Grinding. For I trim. didn't really know what that meant. I think, I think we might be talking about money. I mean, yeah. th- these are some uh, some colloquial I- uh, isms, I think, about R- what their people are saying here in in uh, over there on that little island country. Yeah, real Americanisms, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, grinding for your money is what this movie's about. Sure. So that means uh, singing and like getting people to pay you, so you kind of stop singing and you keep singing your way, and that's how you make your way to make an honest buck. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's an honest buck to be had. Yeah, but it turns out David Goliath, he's got a a voice of a king. He's got that. He's got that Paul Robeson voice to back him up, and uh, mm-hmm. this this catches the fancy of a, a, a choir conductor, a guy named Dick Perry. Um, Sh- sure it is. Sure it is. Sure. And it is. Uh, he's like, he hears this singing outside the window and goes, "By God," he said it's him. The man we've been waiting for. The man we can wait for. Hey, man, here. You're, hard, you're hitting hard times. Well, let's get you a job in the mine. He said, "Hey, there, boy. What day is it?" And he says, "Well, sir, it's Christmas Day." He said, "You bet your ass it is, because you just got a job, pal." Pal. In the anyway, mine. So he he abandons old Bert. Yeah, he does. We get some sad Bert talking about being abandoned. He, as soon as he leaves, he's like, Singing when sad a songs. man is abandoned from all his friends. Yeah, it's kind of a bummer. <laughs> You're right. But he's don't, like, don't you worry, Bert. Everything will work out just fine in the end. Is Bert the mine? Does he cave in the mine on those guys? Uh, I, I, mean, I don't know where Bert was for the rest of this film. I think he might have kicked in that mine. So, anyway, despite the fact that David Goliath is a black man, uh, Dick is able to yeah, yes. swing his dick and get him working. He did what? And so he parried with it. Okay. But, so you get some, it's described what could be a racist objections by one of the workers. Um, she's like, hey, he's as good as anybody. And, uh, and, then, thi- and they get past it all. And they get to work. I, I but, think the line is, "Hey, aren't we all black down there?" Oh yeah, I don't know. I don't know about that line. Yeah, I've heard that they, before. That's they all, that, they all laugh afterwards. They all here. do, and I go, "Hmm." Yeah, they all have a nice little. I, laugh. I get the spirit of it, but okay. Yeah, well intentioned, perhaps. Yeah. Perhaps. Yeah. So, anyways. Uh... <laughs> They, they fuck up. Uh, yeah. <laughs> they, they fill the mine with gas. It it's co- it's kind of like the... This is a fire, and there's a bunch of guys who die, including Dick, but not yeah. David. Um, but and so we had uh, Dick has a son. What's his name? Uh, em- Harry? Emlyn. Emlyn? Emlyn. That's not a good American name. Well, no, it's not. It's not. You know what I mean? So that's a bummer. Dad, Daddy O gets a little final sad scene of being of dying. I'm a, I'm yeah. a Ghana kid. He said, "No matter what they tell you, David, don't let them break your spirit." 
and then they go, oh, okay. So that's good. Sure. Yeah. I, I can do that. I can do that. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So, yeah, so he's dead. Yeah. So that's good. Yes. So anyway, uh, so the mine has closed after mm-hmm. this disaster, which has also, of course, had an impact on the community. Oh, mm-hmm. there's also this depiction of the 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 mine owner being a good guy who wants to get down there and help out. He say, "Hey, I I got no objection to rolling up my sleeves and helping out my fellow guys. Oh, I might own the mine, but guess what? I'm just a regular guy like all yous. Come on, come on." He gives him one of those, I Isn't, believe. I think so. Yeah. I could be wrong, but I'm not. Yeah. So, yeah. So now the miners, they can't go into the mine, which is where the money's at. So they're kind of doing it from the top. Um, so, of course, that means that they're uh, not making good coin for the families. They're not putting mm-hmm. food on the table. Food? Not, you yep. better believe there's no food there, eh? That's right. Oh. So, anyways... Uh, yeah. The the son of Dick Emlyn. He was all mm-hmm. set to get married to a a, a local girl. But mm-hmm. she's like, Hey, you're a bum. You, yeah. You gotta make coin if you wanna marry my girl. So anyway, he's like, Oh well, I guess we better get this mine reopened. Come on, David. <laughs> Let's go whistling. Say so hey there, Dave. We're gonna make Lunch. some new we're gonna march in front of a of a back rear projection. Mm-hmm. Mar- march about uh, we're gonna we're gonna go right to London and say, "Hey, open up that goddamn mine." So anyway, they show up, but guess what? Germany's just invaded Poland. Oh shit! Is that bad? Uh, yeah, I guess. So anyway, oh, okay. uh, British government they don't care about a, a you know coal mine in Wales. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, they're like, "Well, fuck it, we'll do it ourselves." They said we'll do it live. Yeah, we'll do it live, pal. And so they start like wow. you know setting up uh, the underground infrastructure to get in there again. But mayhem ensues. There's some craziness yeah. involving minecarts just b- blasting guys. Yeah. No. Yeah. I mean that does happen. Yeah. What would you do in that situation? Well, fuck! I wouldn't be anywhere near a, a mine. No. <laughs> but mines don't sound like a good time. You're you got a total coal miners like feel <laughs> you just look like a dude who likes to dig in the digging in the dirt well you're the one with the the long fingernails those are for digging mm-hmm. i've told you before those are for grooming Jarrett. grooming my face my like my body yeah i don't i just realized grooming's used in a different way nowadays but grooming myself for myself mm-hmm. grooming claw claws <clears throat> what were we talking about? Um, anyway, so th- some these boys trying to get the mine going, so let's make a living. Uh, they're trapped underground, and there's only one way out. They're going to have to use some dynamite uh, to blow themselves Ooh. to safety, but someone's going to have to go in there and uh, take the hit and mm-hmm. essentially blow themselves up uh, to get the job done. And uh, short straws are drawn, and Emlyn. Emlyn's going to carry on the fine tradition of the Perry family. Not of, Emlyn. Of dying in a mine. And he's like, well, boys, I'm going to go do it. But David Goliath goes, no. <laughs> Knocks him out. And does it himself. Yeah, he and says, then, I'm and, David and, Goliath. I'm David Goliath. And the story ends merrily ever after with <laughs> Paul merrily? Wilson. Paul Robeson's dead, orders yeah. restored. The the mine owner gets to continue to make money, and the worker mm-hmm. will work for him, as per the edit of the film. Uh, yeah. Which apparently, as this film was getting made, the idea was that the the miners were going to wind up uh, taking over the mine and running it themselves. Oh, but in the mine? No, 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 no. That's There's... that. That simply cannot be. So, uh, the director, uh, Penn Tennyson, was forced to recut the ending of the film uh, to uh, a more, um, uh, <laughs> as Wikipedia says, jingoistic atmosphere, uh, which would fit with it, uh, where okay. the, the managers agree uh, to work with the miners 
on this on this deal. They're mm. we're all in this together, more or less, with everything still yeah. in place rather than handing this over to you. Hmm. Is that the vibe you got? Kind of a, sh- a shift between this and the next film in terms of worker well, rights. Well, I mean, Paul Robeson uh, was pushing, pushing those boundaries. This is the beginning of that. Yeah, yeah. He saw stuff, hey? He said, hey, I see something here. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if I like it. That's right. He said, let me tell you, my wife. Um, that's Paul Robeson. That's it. So anyways, uh, The Proud Valley is a movie. Yeah, you're 100% right. I'm not wrong. But uh, outside of its message, which I don't really think is particularly strong one way or another, there's just not much much going on with this movie. Uh, I think the only reason it's in the collection is because Paul Robeson's in it. And I guess it's representative of uh, his shift in politics in terms of like you know being outspokenly pro-labor which apparently yeah. is real dangerous st- stuff you oh, know yeah. you know real dangerous that's like a live grenade Jared. that's right it's you, like a live you, grenade. you get people talking and soon enough they're what else are they going to want let me tell you rights and freedoms <laughs> law and order that's right you know about that mm-hmm. yeah so you're a big fan hey uh no I'm, no, don't, don't sugarcoat it for me. No, I mean it's just tell me how you really feel. Yeah, I don't know. This is some very generic 1940 filmmaking. Uh, yeah. There's n- the characters. Oh, yeah. In my my letterbox review, just knows that this has got one of like the one of the worst worked fist fights I've seen in a movie. Uh, the punch is being a thrown. Fist fight in this yeah, movie. Yeah, there's a real Donnie Brook RJ. Uh. Uh, people throwing fake ass punches. It's uh, it's it's shocking. It's almost like they're only punching part time. <laughs> part time. <laughs> part time. You know what I mean? Right. That's, that's right. That's sad. But yeah, not much going on in the the filmmaking department. Not much going on in the story department. There's no great performance that I would say was there. This just feels like mm-hmm. it's a story about a mine, and then something happens, and then they go do something about it, and then they come back. And then they go back to the mine. Yeah. And then it collapses. You go, maybe people shouldn't be doing this for a living. And and then... That's not the this, option. This, this seems really dangerous. And then uh, then it all wraps up. And yeah. you go, David Goliath, huh? Mm-hmm. I've heard some people describe this movie as the proud hole. Do you subscribe to that? This is like that Canterbury Tales film in a lot of ways, RJ. Real... Uh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But don't... don't... Don't discredit that movie. That movie had the glue man. It had glue man. <laughs> what what other movies can you ta- tell me about that have had glue men in them? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Not this one. Not this one. So I got to tell you, this is a movie that borderlines the gump thing. Like, remember when we watched Jericho and I was like, it was real, real gump-esque in this film. Real gump-esque, yeah. Jared. I think it borders on that, but it never... Never gets there, which is a little bit too bad. Um, so you got this guy. He's traveling around. He's singing. And I was like, oh, here's how they horseshoed uh, Robeson singing in here, which is like, I know that he was a good singer, but like, I feel like there would have been, there there could have been a better way to include his singing in like any of this stuff. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, so... So there's that, but I did like traveling a uh, train man who is just singing and stuff like that. And then it's kind of like, like if you watched it today, I feel like it'd be in like a John C. Riley movie, but like a walk hard one where he's like singing. And it's like, hey, there, you lad, we're from the we're from the, uh, the coal miners association choir. You got a voice like gold. Get in here, son. We get, we need to hear your pipes and bellow. Isn't that exactly what happens? It, it, that's what I'm saying. That's exactly it's like what happens. Out of Walkhart. Yeah, this is what would happen. So I, I was watching. And I was like, okay. And then I was kind of the biggest thing for this movie that kind of took me out of it was like, I was like, do you, do coal miners traditionally or historically 
Like, are they like enthusiastic about the choir? Because every person I've ever met that was in a choir, they're not working in a coal mine. You know what I mean? Like a subway. Yeah, for sure. But they're not working in like a coal mine. You know what I mean? You ever met choir folk? I have, I guess. Yeah. I, I guess so. <laughs> you ever met drama kids? Sure. Drama kids and choir kids are... Uh... Peas in a pod. Yeah. They're sitting at a different table in the lunchroom, if you know what I mean. And I'm not I'm not like belittling a group of people. I'm just saying. But but, but you are. They're absolute nerds, Jarrett. <laughs> I can't sugarcoat it, okay? So like I was like, are these coal miners really into singing? I was like, all right, I guess. Because like... They, they, there was a scene where he's like, they're like, well, let's walk down the mine and sing a song. And I was like, okay, I can kind of get behind that idea where it's like singing to work. But I was like, but is that a coal mine thing? Or is like, you know who else sang while they were working, Jarrett? Hmm. Other people. Chain gangs. Mm-hmm. And other people. And I was kind of like, I don't know what this is trying to say. Well, they they, they didn't have iPods yet. Well, that's true. Let let other people do the singing. How are you going to listen to Bruce Springsteen when he hasn't even been born yet? How can you listen to the Joe Rogan experience uh, when you're on the line? I mean, it's harder and harder nowadays. Like Mm -hmm. uh, at the Pizza Hut, they don't want you to listen to any any podcasts while you work. It's pretty tough. Mm -hmm. I don't know. There's always the rest. They don't want the... Your earbuds falling into the the marinara. Well, they're fine with that. You just pick them up. They just don't want like, like it's like they just don't want to be radicalized, left or right. They just don't want to be on any end of any extreme. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like it's tough. Uh, but uh, so you got that going for you, and that's cool. And then um, yeah, they have Operation like Mine Extraction, which I kind of like. That was the part of the that was the ten minutes of this movie. I was like. I was like, I'm on board now. I was like, Finally. you got me. You got me, kid. I was like, Proud Valley, you caught me. Yeah, you gotta, yeah. You gotta watch uh, that Cabinet of Curiosities uh, autopsy episode. I, I know, I know. Next, there's, there's a crossover. Next Creeptober. Next oh, Creeptober. We, have to, we have to wait a year? Yeah, that was the goal, remember? Because next October, I'll be like, hey, have you ever seen this show? And I forgot you have told me about it. Right. Um. But yeah, I'll watch it next year. Uh, but I liked their little oxygen tank masks. I thought those were cool. And then two minutes in this movie, I think, it, or not two minutes, 12 seconds in this movie is really good. When that coal cart gets <laughs> dislodged <laughs> and that that guy, like Mr. Ross or whatever, it's like, Mr. Ross, Mr. Ross, the cart is coming. And he's like, Ugh. and he, he like grabs that post, that wooden post, and he like, he like spikes it into the cart. He's like, ah, and he tries to stop it. And then it like, in like caves in the mine. It blasts him. That 12 seconds. I was like, yeah, I was like, that's good stuff. I was like, I like that quite a bit. Um, but then people are dead and then the movie's over and I was like, shit. I was like, I wish that was the movie. Oh, well. So, uh, I'm kind of with you. Proud Valley is definitely a movie Mm -hmm. that was made. Yep. Uh, there's some stuff I, I don't mind about this movie. That cart scene was really cool, but um, that's my high point. If yeah, I mean, if if you were like doing some research into depictions of labor and like mining in cinema, well, that documentary we watched, that this would be some. Oh yeah, you watch Harlan County USA. I mean, yeah. which again, like you would just watch that over either of these two films. Yes, I agree. I agree because that has both of these things. It's got better. Both. Yeah, exactly. It, but yeah, you know. they're not of their time. Well, I mean, Joe Rogan wasn't even born yet when this movie came out. So that's, what are we? That's right. What are we supposed to do? <laughs> not, not nothing. Not nothing. Yeah, that's okay. Sad. So, anyways, uh, yeah. Then, then we got Native Land, which is a mm-hmm. docudrama documentary. Um, something, something in between. It is a. So a crossbred of a fictionalized yet non-fiction documentary. Yeah. Because, like, are the stories they tell, are those at all based on factual things? Sure. Or are they all, like, do you know what I mean? Like, are they all just, it's like, yeah, I heard this happen to a union man one time. It's like, let's fuck, put it in. That fits perfectly in here. Yeah. But, like, did they ever fact check these things? Do you know what? No. Yeah, that's okay. They don't need to do that. 
What are we talking about? Well, uh, I was just going to say that we've got ourselves this Native Land, which is co-directed by with uh, Paul Strand, which I was like, oh, yeah. I'm like, Paul Strand, that sounds familiar. And I'm like, oh, I remember learning about him in uh, my history of photography class as well as uh, oh. f- uh, film studies in an art, art historical context because he did this, uh, who's also a uh, communist. Um, sure. But he did a lot of still photography. You know about uh, Stiglitz, RJ? You know about Stiglitz? Do I know about Stiglitz? Yeah, yeah. Stiglitz. You know about him? You know about you know about uh, the short film Manhattan. I know about the Woody Allen film Look, Manhattan. You you go ask uh, uh, Andrea about it. She'll tell you all about Manhattan. No, we don't talk about art. What about man Mad Hatters? Mad Hatters. Uh, there was a bar in Mad Westbridge Hatter. called Mad Hatters for I know, a while. I know. <laughs> is that what you're? Is that what you're referring to? Yes. Okay, I'll talk to her about it. I'll definitely ask her. Okay. I'll definitely ask her. So, this, RJ, is some, mm-hmm. some good old-fashioned communist propaganda, as, uh, oh. as, as the letterbox people reviews will mention. But, I mean, this is a movie made by aspiring communists trying to depict America lovingly, but also mm-hmm. challengingly. Mm-hmm. There's a, there's a, it's mm. curious. Tough, you, so, fair. Yeah. So what do you, so this opens up with like a, a summary of the history of America saying a bunch of people showed up and colonized it and everything yeah. was great. What kind of land <laughs> and, was it? Uh, land, open, free land. And, but the weirdest selection of music, I don't know if it's intentional. So it's kind of like, <laughs> I, I, I got you. It's kind of, it's like, boom, 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 boom. It's it's got it's got another tinge to it. Uh, what I would uh, call like sort of a uh, Native American sound over top of it, which sure. I can't um, I assume is kind of intentional. I mean, I th- do you think Paul Robeson was like, yeah, I'll make this movie because I like this stuff. But he's like, and they're like, we're gonna call it Native Land, and he went, oh yeah, I got an idea, and then he, you know, it's my guess. But, so yeah, if there's just this, so Paul Robeson narrates this. He's not he's mm-hmm. not in it. Uh, sometimes he pl- he plays like spooky ghost voice or s- spooky so- ghost vo- song voice. Oh, it's spooky! It's spooky. You better believe it's spooky. He says, "America, you ever been here, sweetheart?" That's uh, Paul Robeson's voice. <laughs> Let me tell you, honey. Hun, you, you know you know ropes classic Robeson. Classic but, yeah, so this opens up with just um, a laying out of uh, American history, but then it has mm-hmm. these little interludes, the, the docudrama sections of farmers dying on their lands, mm-hmm. uh, falling to the de- falling to the deaths, wink, wink, talking mm-hmm. about mysterious interlopers, uh, how people are just trying, they just want to get by and pay their rent, make a little bit of mm-hmm. make a little bit of money to support their families. It's all anybody really wants in America. Yep. But, but then there's people who you know. When they try to gather and then they try to make their lives better, there's other forces that are going to bash you good. And let me yeah. tell you, RJ, uh, it was very interesting watching this the other day because at the very same time, uh, there was uh, some discord involving uh, poten- potential uh, job action uh, that was on the table uh at, at my workplace so I, uh, I, I so i found it very interesting watching this um pro labor uh documentary which is such a strange thing watching this sort of thing anymore because mm-hmm. i find labor doesn't really do a very good job of presenting itself well or in a way that has any urgency or the fact that there was a sort of this vague sense of the fact that there was a period of time where employers would try to kill you for organizing because your organizing mm-hmm. will cost them money and it's in their best interest to kill you so that you don't gather and organize and cost them money. That yeah. is what is happening. And it seems like, even though it's like obvious that this was happening, uh, it seems like there's enough going on in the world to ignore that fact <laughs> and to which you go, what the fuck? I mean, let's not sugarcoat it. People, the supply chain. So, ah, I, of course. You know what I how, mean? How could I forget? Like, do you even Quar- know about the, the supply chain? The quarters. Well, I mean, think about it. Like, 
I mean, inflation. No. Like it's it's crazy. Yeah, I, I did hear that stuff about uh, your your place of business, and mm-hmm. it sounded like a lot of horse shit, if you ask me. Uh, it's just what it is. Uh, it sounded pretty deflating, but you know, there was these the, you know coworkers where they just they love talking to management. They love mm-hmm. just laying it all bare, and they like talking about it. And you just go, "Hey, shut the fuck up." <laughs> Is that what you told them? <laughs> um, no, I did oh. not. But after oh, watching shit. this documentary, I sure felt like it. Saying, "Hey, shut the fuck up, people! Don't, hey, don't, don't shut be, up! Don't be running your yap over there!" Oh shit! You, you don't get anything out of it. Like, not, like literally, you actually get nothing out of it other than uh, knowing that you're. Uh, you're a, you're a weakling, and you uh, you're a good person that they can pump for information later as they see fit. But they'll treat you like a, a little a little baby manager without anything to, like any benefit mm-hmm. whatsoever, other than you feel like a big boy. Uh, like a what boy? Uh, like a big boy. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Is that good? I don't know. Some people uh, that's enough for them. Yeah. But uh, yeah, th- this there was parts of this that again, it's not the best documentary. There's yeah. um, it's it's like what seventy five minutes long, and it's it's definitely several minutes long. Several minutes long, uh, kind of yeah. meanders in and out. There's this the most prolonged sequence is, I don't even know what the job is. It's just basically it seems like the job is unioning, the uh, inside man on the union. Yeah, there's an inside guy who's pay, who's like a a hired gun. Essentially, to yeah. get in on these unions, get the names, so that they can. Mm-hmm. I think it might be like a like a car manufacturer. I, cause yeah, I guess it is because there's the bit where, uh, where where there's like a montage of guys whose names are on the list uh, mm-hmm. getting fired one by one because they're they're just gonna find reasons to fire you. Yeah, because it acts as a uh, you know a deterrent for people to do it at all. Yeah. And I mean, even uh, in old Creepsville, uh, it sounds mm-hmm. like a uh, at one of the uh, local Starbucks is uh, fired one of these rabble rousers uh, who are pushing for unionization. So I've so I've read. I wonder. I see that story a lot, and I wonder. It's like I wonder if those people were actually like unionizer people and like believed in it, or is like, do you think they just have the internet and they're just like the union, and they were like going for it? You know what I mean? I don't know. They vote. They organized a vote, uh, yeah, and it wound up in like a split. And then there, but there's like it depends on which location you go to. Uh, there's mm-hmm. people a little bit more on the radical side, a little crazier. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, I mean, this is the response, though. I mean, um, one of the major grocery chains in Canada just did the same shit with uh, some group trying of Teamsters trying to uh, organize, I guess, at a yeah. at one of their warehouses, and they're like, well. We, we don't want that, so we're just going to – we'll fire you. We're going to send letters out, saying, like literally just saying it. And there's supposed to be checks and balances from like a legal perspective so that this doesn't happen. Mm-hmm. But it never goes to court because these things either resolve themselves by people quitting or a contract actually happening. So it's like, yeah, it's all uh, kind of horse shit. And it seems like every year there's just more of a, more of a gradual erosion uh, of, of those so-called rights – uh, because mm-hmm. it's because it's uh it doesn't agree with the uh the powers that be who are about like making friends and donors a lot of money mm. which are allegedly going to trickle down to us any any time now any time now do you, do any you know about um any time now supply chain yep supply chain okay yeah i i, I was just curious I, I just didn't know if yeah. you if you if you had heard. Then we get so, we get a nice little we get a montage of uh, the violence that uh, hired guns, uh, you know your Pinkerton agencies that will come, which we saw again saw uh, depicted with a little bit more urgency um, uh, with Harlan County USA. That those like yeah they'll just come and kill you. Like mm-hmm. this is the thing that the I don't know if people appreciate who are part of unions, and I mean I have my frustrations with unions too, but. There is uh, a there, there. People were willing to kill over this, mm-hmm. and I, I think that's lost on people. So. Do you think you would be one of those guys? I'd like be. I'd, if... I'd be. They they drop me. 
No, like one of the guys willing to do it. Like, what's your dollar amount to take someone what, out? Uh, gun thug? <laughs> no, I'm yeah. not. I, I, I will not be a gun thug, RJ. What's what's the dollar? <laughs> what's, what's, how much? How, how much? How much do PlayStation 5s cost again? Uh, I'd say at least one to two heads. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Like that—that that might be two hits. Take them out. That might—it's not just one. It says, "Listen." Does, does that include a game? Uh, that's that's two hits and a crippling. What, what about what, what about like a like a PlayStation Plus? Like, you know, a sub. So I get some. Get uh, the fuck out of here! You're 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 done. You're, I, I don't. You're, hey, I'm trying to bargain in good faith here. Yeah, I know, but it's like you're gonna be under the under these guys' thumb for years yeah, and right. years and years yeah, at this little, point. Be a little snitch. Yeah, you say, listen, I got I got the info on those guys who are doing the bad thing. That's right. My name's Jared. Yeah. Just send just send me that download code for that digital game, and I'll tell you exactly where they went. Oh, Horizon. Friend, Horizon Forbidden West. John Carpenter said it was a, a pretty good game. See, that's and that's exactly what these guys sound like. He he didn't say it was great, but he said it was pretty good. <laughs> it's just like, well, that's demonstrated. It's like sometimes you don't maybe kill him, just lay a beating into him. Yeah, yeah. yeah so what was this, can we just, was this Dennis? We just potentially it's might. Always, need it's to always rough it's this always guy. some guy named Dennis. Oh, there's always a Dennis. There's always a Dennis. No. What? No. I mean, what do you do? He had, an ac- do, you do? he had an accident on the line. Well, he just kind of fell Mrs. into the. It means Dennis is going to be wiping his ass for the rest of his life. Well, he, just his ass, if we're lucky. You know what I mean? <sighs> There's a lot of other things he could be, he could be, she could be wiping. Ugh. Do you know what I mean? I'm, I'm not talking about butts anymore. I'm talking about something else. <laughs> right. It's grosser. Wait, can you hear me more clear when I, I talk? Can. Yeah, it's, it's it's very sensual, RJ. Incredible. I might do the rest of the show like this. Wow. Yeah. Talking about uh, you talking about labor spies. To oh, me. I can talk about the labor spies. Whatever you need. Can, can you tell me about the uh, La Follette committee? Yeah. So Lafayette, Georgia, potentially Virginia. La- Follette, Follette, not La so. Follette, Lafayette, Virginia, is a uh, city in um uh the uk and uh paul robeson worked there as a coal miner at one point in his life it it, it is incredible and that's it that's all there is Mm -hmm. it's the end of the story baby end of the story it's the end of the story hell of a thing Mm -hmm. but what are you gonna do you know what i mean so you like this film quite a bit? Is that what you're telling me? Mm, I mean, it's just sort of a, it, it's just a film. It's just a documentary yeah. that exists. Mm-hmm. And I feel like there's just better things. But I mean, it's kind of weird because with, particularly with like labor movement stuff and documentaries about labor, I feel like yeah. if any of it, anything's better than nothing. This one is just sort of like on that nothing side where you go, yeah, I don't think this like other than Paul Robeson narrating it because he cared about the cause of mm-hmm. um, you know workers labor people getting a uh, a good deal and talking about the you know the the, the shit the shittiness of uh, the people in power who are trying to stay mm-hmm. in power and who don't like these disruptions <clears throat> to 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 this to the hand gestures of the money. But uh, mm. I don't know. Again, it, there's just I feel like there's just better things you could watch. This one's, uh, this one's got this, those, the fun little reenactments. Uh, if you're into kind of that campy, sort of like this like pseudo film noir mm-hmm. thing going on, which I'm going to assume is the uh, the Leo Hurwitz element. It kind of reminded me of uh, Unsolved Mysteries. A sure. Bit. Yeah. It, where Paul Robeson goes, picture this, if you will. A man in America working in Utah. And this man. It's part of the Ooh, union. Leo Guess Hurwitz what happens next? was the son of a Russian anarchist. He is, was he? He graduated from Harvard uh, and became the leader of New York's left-wing movement, uh, film movement, uh, in the Workers' Film and Photo League, NY Kino. So, mm. uh, so that, uh, Paul Rub- uh, Robson's falling in with these, these radicals. Well, I mean, that was his—that was his jam, right? Mm-hmm. He just liked to hang out well, and have fun. 
old timey Antifa RJ. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa! I'm sure. You gotta be careful when you say that stuff. Uh huh. I know. Are, those Roganites are coming know, for yeah. you. Dum dums. You know what they'll do. Dum dums. <laughs> you know what they'll do. Yeah. <laughs> Take a bite right out of your dick. Sure, sure. If they have an opportunity, they'll bite your yeah. penis well, right they off. Should be, they'll be very concerned about Native Land, which has 417 logs on uh, Letterboxd. Uh, Proud Valley, what are we at with Proud Valley? Beep, boop, beep, boop, 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 boop. Ah, 481. Damn, well, at least they're consistent. Yeah. So it's the 400 people... The 480 people who bought the Robeson trilogy, or the 480 out of the 500 that bought it, but actually made it all the way through the end. <laughs> That's right. That, you that, know what I getting mean? to that last disc. I, I have a lot of unwashed last discs in box sets. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's not great. Yeah. You how watch about, him right now. How about when that guy uh, takes that crowbar to those eggs? That seems pretty wild, just in general. You have this old man, they're like, picture this, an old man in America. He has a convenience store, and he sells eggs to little girls. And then you go, okay. And then what about that scene of him? What is it butter or is it cheese that he's cutting out of that thing? Impossible you, to say. All I know it, is that the problem is that he's uh, sending he's sending some proceeds uh, to some local uh, labor and worker yeah. organizations, and, and a man in a fedora shows up. He's like, "You yeah, knock it off, you get out of town. I'm gonna smash <laughs> more eggs next time, Mac." And then he, he, he throws a plum at the little girl. He <laughs> actually he pegs pegs her right <laughs> yeah. in the head. He's like, "Here, girl, have a plum," and it like it bounces off of that girl's head pretty hard. I was like, "Oh shit." <laughs> I was like, you didn't have to throw it for real, or like, you didn't have to like hit her for real and just throw it at the wall or something. But yeah, he comes in and his name's, he's like, I'm Johnny Toothpicks, and I'm here to say that no more eggs is being sold today. This is and native he's, land. <laughs> this is the native land for guys like me named Johnny. And then <laughs> the way he, he kind of like jabs it in, he's like, yeah. Uh, Johnny Nero. Johnny Nero. You remember me? I got the hat. Oh. He smashes him up real weird, and then his energy with the girl is very strange. It's like, it's like, how can we show that this guy's bad? And, and it's like, let's make him be, not just smash the eggs, let's make him be inappropriate to that little girl. And then you <laughs> yeah. go, was it totally necessary? Because he's sick. We understood he was bad. I don't know if we needed that extra stuff. Oh. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't know. Like, uh, it's like I said, I I like the idea of this. Like, I I think at the time this would have been more um, impactful because, like, speaking out about this stuff, it's like, did you know that all over America men are dying because unions are oh. trying to be formed, <laughs> and it's just like, oh shit. And also, it, yeah, because this is 1942. This is yeah. you know, World War Two is going. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, I do think this movie has, um, it, it, it definitely was had the potential to be an impactful thing for people. Like, you're just like, yeah, I can see what it's like. Yeah, and if, I don't if, mind if and when it was life. seen by people. Yeah, if it was seen by anybody is the thing. Like, uh, yeah, I don't mind the fiction, like the, uh, the reenactments of things. It's like I said, it reminds me of Unsolved Mysteries in a way. Although it, I would have preferred if it was like people who weren't actors. It was like, ah, oh, he. He smashed those eggs. He he's over there, and I'd be like, "Yeah, that's the stuff I like." Um, but uh, yeah, I don't I don't mind. Um, I didn't mind Native Land. Like I liked some of the stuff they were going for in it. I was like, I can see what they're doing. Uh, you get a you get a good mix of things. You get just the unioners. You get the the farmers. You get uh, the store man and his eggs being smashed. You get the sermon on the mount, Jarrett. You get that guy, the preacher. He says, oh, all those big men, they didn't want me to tell you this sermon, but I'm going to do it anyways because fuck them. And then he, he's like, they're killing men in the streets. And I went, oh, shit. And then Paul Robeson's in the back. He goes, law and order, not on my watch. He says, guns. That's what we're about in this country. And I went, oh, shit. I did mm -hmm. think that some of this movie, I was like, it's like like some of the stuff you watch in this, like they're talking about like riots and like unions and like labor stuff. And I was like, nothing's really changed, eh, in 80 years. Like, 
I think the illusion of change is there and there are unions here, but like, it's like you look back a year, two years ago, of what was going on in well, North you, America. You, 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 unions took a drumming back in the eighties, not just unions, but like, you know what I mean? Where it's like all this like violence in the streets and stuff. And, I was like, nothing's really changed that much. Eric. I'm bu- <laughs> the violence in the streets of uh... Creepsville. Creepsville. Well, the cops are just caving in heads left and right, Jared. <laughs> you try know. to buy a plum, and just... you're dead. So <laughs> the plum man. It's the law and order world now, Jared. Well, we have uh, what five 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 hundred homeless people, according to uh, one report that just landed uh, today. So uh, that's a lot. That's who a took l- that? Who took that number? I don't know, uh, people who volunteered and gathered it. That's a lot of people. What do they do? They just walk by a person and just they go, I think, they're, ah, I think this guy's homeless. I think, I think there's a methodology of interviews, RJ. You should read about it. No, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it because I don't buy it. And frankly, it sounds sociology-based, so I think it's all made up. <laughs> or, so, you know, so, civil well, planning. So, so is it send them to an island and experiment uh, on them? Is that oh, your... like Shutter Island? Yeah. That's that's an that, idea. That's the RJ solution. That's an idea. Well, Red Deer used to do such things, so. Yep. Yep. Just send them, send them to the donut tell, mill. Tell them RJ sent you. You walk into the donut mill. Someone's yeah. gonna someone's gonna make them biscuits. RJ sent me. And it's like, yeah. we where, got you. Where do Come they, on when, into when, the when back. Do, when do they sleep after the shift? Don't care. They don't. No. Well, you don't. They put in twelve hours. Executed. Because there's going to be new ones tomorrow. Uh, I love yeah. on a live microphone. <laughs> the training's a, uh, a nightmare because you got to train them every day. But oh, uh, goodness. the turnover, Jarrett, the turnover. Um, it's character for a podcast. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. What were we talking about? Uh, let's find out who who hates these films. Let's see if there's any additional. Oh, nobody's insight. even watched. No, no one's watched things. these things, so there's not that many. I've only got only got one for each. How about that? Um, Richard Cross uh, regarding uh, Proud mm. Valley, uh, an uncomfortable attempt to embed elements of socialism into a film designed to drive home the need for all levels of society to work together. As Spriton prepared itself for a lengthy conflict. The Proud Valley promotes the fantastic notion of high-ranking management rolling up their sleeves and toiling harmoniously alongside miners in the cold tunnels when disaster strikes. Paul Robeson, a hulking good-natured giant, is an, an <clears throat> unlikely interloper who encounters negligible racism but nominates himself as the sacrificial lamb so that the white man might live characterizations are paper thin stereotypes that show little evidence of a life beyond their film scenes damn um, you want to hear about richard or you want to hear about dick cross sure I, I i'm gonna read this there's a lot of commas in here so it might sound like i'm being dramatic i'm not this is just how it's written a keen movie watcher since the age of 14 i spent most of my life simultaneously feeling as if I've watched far too many and nowhere near enough movies. Letterbox provides a home for the reviews that don't appear on 2020 movie reviews. I'm not sure what that means. Allegedly, Dick Cross has watched 15,000 films. I don't buy that. 15,000? Possible. How many have you seen? How many have you seen? Uh, seven or eight. Yeah, fifteen thousand. Uh, uh, one of this guy's favorite films is Body Heat. Ooh. Nineteen eighty one. So. Ooh. Get, get some 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 William Hurt action. Sexy. You get, William he's Hurt. gonna get. I mean, I'm at seventy four hundred. RJ. Fifteen thousand seems crazy. That's uh, one of the highest numbers I've ever seen. Well, well, I don't know, man. Maybe he's an old. I old, do know. Maybe he's an old boy. He's been around like for a, a long time. Like a leather daddy? Uh, no, like a, uh, a, cellul- a celluloid daddy. Oh. Like, what was that movie you made me watch that one time? <laughs> Cruising? No. <laughs> sure. That works, too. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, that works, too. You got shingles. It was the sickest uh, until recently. 
It was one of the sickest I had ever been in my life up to that point. Mm-hmm. And then Jared said, "Here, you know what? I, you know what'll make you feel better? Here's a double header for you: happiness and gummo." Yeah. And I went with my one <laughs> side of my face unable to move. I said, "Is it going to make me feel better?" <laughs> oh, yeah, babe. Yeah. He said, "Yeah, no problem. This is going to take care of you." I went, "Okay." Crying. So another uh, real deal name here. Caden Brooks. This is for Native Land. Okay. Two stars. Native Land wants so badly to be a narrative film, which it easily could have been while still getting its point across, but opts out of that decision and instead manifests a wobbly narrative vignette structure for whatever reason. Nothing here suggests that Native Land must be a documentary other than that it be a documentary for the sake of it, because in truth... This does nothing as a documentary film that a narrative film couldn't, which wouldn't be such a huge issue were it to have gone full on documentary rather than throwing amateur actors in its superficial narrative bit hits bits mm. in order to appear more real and like you. Not to mention that there are certain stretches which feel borderline propagandistic. Oh, shit. I admire a lot of the ideas this film offers, but this type of execution is hardly convincing. Um, Caden Brooks, I kind of appreciate this. Uh, their review says, trying to find myself. My reviews suck. That's their bio, which I kind of like. Very preemptive. Uh, and, yeah, an Eternal Sunshine fan. Seems like they have watched it many, many times, they say. But Eternal Sunshine and Taxi Driver, so those are their two favorite films. What do you think that means? <laughs> think Paul, they've ever seen. Paul Schrader fan. Think they've ever seen Joker? Paul Schrader fan. Paul Schrader fan. Paul Schrader fan. Hey, is that your last smoke? Can I have that? I don't mind. That's uh, that's fine. That's fine. That's okay. Yeah, that's that's okay. Anyways, that's about it. That's all. Yeah. RJ. That's Paul Robeson. What what, what have we learned? That I. Uh, I think I'm leaning towards the John Carpenter approach. Are you going to make more movies? I'd rather be playing video games. And I go, yeah, no. I get it now. I get it. Do you think Do you think he watched the Paul Robeson set? <laughs> Probably not. Yeah. Do you think he, he saw the Astros <laughs> Playroom set? Yeah. Probably. 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 What do I think of Paul Robeson? I don't know. I think this could have been one movie. Just pick the best one, mm-hmm. and these could have all been supplementary things. That would have been a hell of a bonus thing. Like, for the Robeson <laughs> guy out there, you're like, I'm buying this for, out of these movies, I don't know. Let's say Jericho. He said, I'm buying it for Jericho. Yeah. That's the spine number. But it comes with Proud Valley, too? And they go, oh, mercy. And I go, that's good. That's good for the robes, robe heads out there. That's right. Yeah, so... I, not as you said at the start of this episode, none of these movies are outright bad. I mean, the silent films are a little tough, yeah. But none of them are outright bad. It's just I like, like that Emperor Jones. That one was Emperor fun. Jones ain't bad. Emperor Jones ain't bad. You just you watch it and you go, I don't know. You go, does it do? Did we need to watch six? Of, did we need to watch eight eight of these in a month? We did. Probably not. We did it. I mean, we did it. I'm just saying, do we need to? No. We didn't need to. So whatever. So that's good. That's swell. Yeah. So anyways, tell me more about these movies you like. No, no, that's that's fine. I think I've said it all. Okay. No. Yeah, there's just, uh, I guess it's unfortunate there's nothing more compelling uh, that came out of the, the, the ropes and story. Where's the, where's the Paul ropes and biopic? Does, does that exist? <laughs> who, who plays ropes in Paul, the biopic? I don't know if it exists. Biopic. Okay. I'm going to say something crazy. There was, a, there was a uh, documentary called Paul ropes here. I stand, which came out in 1999. It's just like another one of those tribute things as a PBS American masters. Uh, one Ozzy Davis narrated it. Of course he did. Um, but yeah, there's not, I don't know if it's good or bad, but it existed. 
Okay, like, what about... It's like two hours long. It might have been a little bit more in-depth than that one uh, Sidney Poitier narrated from the 70s. Yeah. Who would you cast as Robeson? I think we... I can't remember now. Uh, what you had, you had a bunch of suggestions. I think I said Tony Todd at one point. No. Yeah, you did. And Whoopi Goldberg probably got thrown out there, but I, I recommend her for every biopic. Uh, you know who I was thinking? You know who would actually work? Jonathan Majors. Do you remember him from Last Man in uh, San Francisco? What was that movie called? Uh, Last Man in San Francisco? He's well, Kang. He's Kang. <laughs> in he's the Kang. Yeah, he, sure. He's the I mean, Kang dynasty. He, he, I think. He's, we gotta, where are you going? How are you going to do that voice? Oh, I'll do it. I'll do the. I'll do the voiceover for that. that. that the baritone voice. Yeah, I can. I can do that. People have co- frequently commented on this podcast that my voice is sultry. It's um. It's supple, and uh, a lot of them have been like, "Man, it's got, uh, it's got something to it. It's not whiny. It's not like nasally. It's not like, it's, it's, it's not weird at all. It's wheezy. It's not wheezy at all. It doesn't sound like he's he does anything that would make him wheeze. It doesn't sound like he's a bad dude. He's just like a, a regular guy. Sultry. You know about sultry? <clears throat> well then know? yeah after the break yeah we go home at the end of our regulated eight hour work day yeah sleep and prepare for another week of prepper preparing for another criterion film for for our yeah. hard fought rights to podcast yeah where would you be on this which side are you on you're killing people right 